Welcome. Today I'm going to talk about the idea of uh, quadratic functions and their transformation. So I'm going to move that graph around a little bit. I'm basing the idea off of the parent function for quadratics, which is y equals x squared. I will make reference to maybe an a and a c. What I'm doing here, as you can see in this corner, I have the standard form of a quadratic. So the a would be the coefficient or the number in front of x squared. c would be the number that doesn't have anything with it or an x or whatever. And c, of course, can't be 0. That's one of the basic tenets of standard form. Uh, now, let's go ahead and graph the y equals x squared so you could just get a general idea in your head in case you hadn't thought about it or hadn't moved to that point yet. So y equals x squared here. Oops, didn't change the color. I'm trying to make a sort of a color statement, I guess. So here, it would just be our generic y equals x squared. I'm going to try to do a reasonably OK job without spending 10 hours of you watching me graph. That would be insane. So as you can see, it's our general form in the sense that there is a minimum value of a vertex at 0, 0. And it kind of goes up in a nice parabola, that whole thing. Not the greatest parabola ever, but it's better than nothing. Now, from here, what we're going to deal with is the idea of what if we start altering the number that like right now it's a 1. What if we alter that number in front of x squared? Specifically, we're going to start out with the idea of a reflection. A reflection would be what happens if I put a negative number in front of x squared. So we'll just do the most generic reflection, negative x squared. So in this case, it'll sort of change the idea of what our graph looks like in a significant way, really. So if I wanted to graph y equals negative x squared, everything would be flipped over. And uh, the vertex would still be the same thing. But then I instead of going up 1 over 1 and getting 1, I actually go down. So I end up with something that looks a little bit like this. I don't know why I drew a dot there. I was trying to hurry, I guess. So in this case, my y equals negative x squared just looks like the graph nice and flipped over. So you can see it's the reflected about the x-axis here. Not a huge deal, but you know, no major changes other than which way it's going. Also, I should say that instead of having a minimum value like this purple one did, x squared, the uh, negative x squared actually has a maximum value. So anytime you see a negative in front of the coefficient of x squared, or your a term is negative, you need, to be make, you need to make sure that it's facing downwards instead of up. Another type of alteration to that coefficient that we can make is to uh, stretch the graph. And by stretching, I mean I'm going to change uh, the number in front of x with an a value that's actually greater than 1. So we're going to do y is equal to 2x squared. This sh should alter the look of the graph. And the stretching thing becomes way more apparent once you actually start looking at it. y is equal to 2x squared. So in this case, instead of being 1, 1, I'm actually 1, 2. And instead of being 2, 4, I'm actually 2, 8. So I'll get this sort of thing. Now, if you imagine in your head that, uh, I don't know where else you imagine. I don't even know why I added that part. People do that all the time, though. It's weird. Um, if you imagine the y equals x squared is sort of a rubber band, if I pull that rubber band, it starts to tighten out. And, uh, the slope is much greater. So that would be a stretch. The other type that we might want to deal with is the sort of the balance to stretching, which would be a compression. Now, a compression is when my a value falls somewhere between 0 and 1. So we're going to do y equals 1 half x squared. Actually, it's a more dramatic statement if instead of doing 1 half, I do y is equal to 1 fourth x squared. I had done a previous one and used x squared, or 1 half, and it's not as bold of a statement as 1 fourth is. And it could be anything. 1 half looks similar to this. It's just not as dramatic. So in this case, at 1, 1, I'd be squaring 1, but then I'd only multiply by a fourth. When I do 2, I would square it and get 4, but I'd only end up getting 1. And then in the next case, I would be doing um, 9 divided by 4. So I send up a little bit past 2, so like right in here. I'm going to try to recreate that as much as I can over here and not spend 10 years on it. So I sort of have this thing going on. And as you can see, y equals 1 4th x 
squared looks a lot flatter. It's, we're compressing it. We're pushing it down. So we took our rubber band analogy, and now we're pushing the two, the top and the bottom of the rubber band together. So it sort of flattens it out. It doesn't. The slope is not nearly as steep. That's considered to be uh, compression. With all these graphs, what you can notice is that the vertex is the same place. I haven't done anything to move my starting point for my graph. It's always been at the origin. Now we're going to look at modifying our quote unquote C value, and that'll change where the vertex starts. So when we get over to the translation section, the uh, we're not necessarily compressing or stretching or flipping anything. We're just moving where the starting point is. So for my uh, vertical shift, oops. So my vertical shift, I may say instead of uh, moving y equals x squared, I can keep my y equals x squared. But in, what I'm going to do is add a plus or minus on the other side of it. So let's just do a minus 3. And now I realize that this is very tough to see this color, so I'm going to shift it to this green. I was trying to avoid that balance, but too late for that. So y equals x squared minus 3. Now what this will look like the graph itself should look a lot like the purple one because that's our parent and it hasn't changed. The only difference is instead of starting at 0, I'm starting at negative 3, which makes, you know, a reasonable amount of sense. This one's actually going to sort of run through a couple of the other graphs. That sort of thing. So um, if you have the number on the outside, uh, so it's x squared minus 3 and there's no weird parentheses or anything, you just shift it up and down. And it's actually in a very intuitive form. Well, it says minus 3, so you move down 3. Now a horizontal shift, on the other hand, does not work that way at all. It's uh, counterintuitive, in, in my head at least. So in this state, uh, when I do a horizontal, what I'm going to use is a parentheses. So in this case, I'll do y is equal to, let's say, x minus 2, and we're going to square that. So usually you would think, well, I went minus 3, so I went down. So for the horizontal shift, when I have that parentheses, I'll just go to the negative side of the x-axis and go to minus 2 and start graphing from there. But the nature of the x squared actually shifts it around. So my y is equal to parentheses x minus 2, and that thing is squared. So instead of going over here, I actually move it over here. And then I start uh, sort of working my way up. that whole thing. So the shift in the vertical sense where I don't have the parentheses is uh, very, uh, you know, that's what you'd think it would look like. It's intuitive. Uh, if it says plus 5, you go up 5. Whereas the horizontal, if you have that parentheses, you have to go the opposite. And it's just based on the numbers. You can plug them in and it shows a pretty good picture of why it works that way. It's because it sort of has to balance out the x value is the real reason. But um, let's look for uh, what happens if we have a combination of both of those things? So I, I want to look at something that has all of it all together. So I'll do sort of a, I'll just do this color. And I, I can't remember if I hit black or gray at this point. So say I do a y equals x minus 3, or let's do x minus 5, something bigger, plus 2. In this case, I'm doing both things, and I need to just square this just to show you that it's a parabola. So y is equal to x minus 5 squared. I think I said plus 2. I'll go back and look just to make sure. Yes. Uh, now, I'm allowed to combine those two things together. In fact, I can combine all of these. I'll have another video where I do a bunch of mixes of them. Uh, but my, uh, I need to look at where the vertex starts first. That's always your visual starting point. So my minus 5, to me, since it's in parentheses, means I need to shift it horizontally to like right here. And then it goes up 2, so it starts right there. So I'll end up with something that looks in the general idea of this. So that's it. Stretching compressions, reflections, um, horizontal and vertical translations, and uh, in another video I'll do combinations of all these things to get you uh, hopefully settled up for any of those types of problems that you see. But that's quadratic function transformations.